Hey everybody and welcome to episode 32 and just want to say this is a pretty jam-packed episode. I'm joined by my partner in crime, Nick. Hey kids, how you doing? And we've got lots of stuff. First off, the topic is Neo Geo. It's been Neo Geo month here at the Arcade Hunters headquarters. We've been posting our combo of review slash let's play Neo Geo videos we recorded at Fun Spot. And we also pick the winners for the free copies of Edge Magazine, the uh, I, digital version, the codes. And we also announced a new contest. I have a buttload of Donkey Kong cards and we're going to be giving them away. And you have to listen to the episode, you'll find out how you can win those. And what else do you have to add? Nick, of the our cup overfloweth with goodness here. So, the the Neo Geo topic we talk about our history of first finding the game, some of our favorite games. We talk a little bit about the um, the handheld console. You know about when we found out that there was a home version mm -hmm. and a whole lot more. And of course, if you can hear the song in the background, we're gonna call it four bright buttons and two joysticks. So here it is, episode thirty two of the Arcade Hunters podcast. Please enjoy. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm sitting down in the chair, and the one arm is lower than the one on the left <laughs> arm is lower than the one on the right. I'm like, what the hell? So it's gonna be like that thing on YouTube with the guy that's too fat to sit, and he's like, <laughs> and falls on the ground. Oh God, no! I'm... That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the arm is loose. I'm gonna have to tighten it up. Wow, what what way to start a podcast? Oh, very nice. <laughs> I, I don't know what we were, no, we were recording. <laughs> yeah, my, my chair keeps going. <laughs> like that. Doesn't matter what I do, it just keeps doing it. Oh my god. So, hello everybody. <laughs> this is Nick. And my, you can hear him having chair problems. That's Gerard. Hello. And welcome to episode 32 of the Arcade Hunters podcast. Hooray. And I'd like to welcome all the school psychologists and medical doctors, since apparently we have new following because of our ADHD episode. Yeah. <laughs> so tell, them, tell them what we mean by that. So one of our episodes, I forgot the, I forgot the actual name of it, but it has ADHD in the title. Well, the name of the episode is ADHD because we're just bouncing back and forth yeah, from topic to topic. Yeah, yeah. So that episode has... One of the, if I last time I checked, has the highest number of downloads by quite a bit. And I, I told Nick it's because people are probably searching for medical podcasts, school related podcasts, search for like an ADHD podcast that comes up. It's they see it in the title, so they download it. And they're probably like, What the hell is this? It says Arcade Hunter <laughs> right on it. <laughs> Oh, arcade games cause ADHD? I have to yeah, check this out. Yeah, exactly. This gets my medical opinion. <laughs> and maybe they do listen to it and go, holy shit, listen to these people talk. It's true. It's damn true. <laughs> I already know what we're calling this episode. You kind of screwed up the last episode. I was going to be under construction and you put please enjoy instead. But... Well, we didn't, we, no one said it. Uh, you said it at the end after we were done. So he goes, that's a perfect name for it because we were talking about how Fun Spot was... Uh, constantly in a state of construction, oh, and I, so was so I, was my. Uh, I, com I completely blanked on it. Yes. Completely blanked, and when I listened to the. Intro, yeah, you listen it, to the beginning. You say. When I listen to to the intro, there's not there. I didn't hear anything about that in the intro. That's something that you just usually say. Please enjoy. Yep. That's your, that's your catchphrase. So yes, you know, yes, the last episode was the catchphrase. Yeah, I thought the, that picture from, I think it was Friday the 13th Part 2. The, yes. guy, the guy just looking sad and down with the Kiss pinball machine in the background mm -hmm. and the Please Enjoy was fitting. Yeah, I was watching uh, James uh, James Rolfe had, um, he's been doing uh, all the Friday the 13th yep. movies now. So he's doing, he did uh, the first five and then he's going to do the next ones for, yep. uh, in March when it's the next Friday the 13th. Yep, and I, everybody was saying online goes, you're telling me that the 2015 has two Friday the 13th, and no. there's not a new movie. No, we have three. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Three. One in February, one in March, and I think one in like October, or November. Yeah. Especially like October, November, you got like your mm-hmm. your Halloween season. You want to have a nice spooky movie out for you. Yeah, well, I think the Michael Bay. I think it was him that produced the, it. Uh, the Friday, thir- Friday the Thirteenth remake kind of left a bad taste in people's yeah. mouths. I don't care what anybody says. I still love Freddy vs. Jason. I oh thought God, that was yeah, great. that's one. That's one of my favorite movies. It's it's just goofy fun. Because I think for us, because of how we saw it when we saw it in the raucous theater, you <laughs> had like you had half half an. It, it had like all the you know like long New York Long Island you know like the cultural melting pot so yeah. you had you know you had the preppy white kids and you had the Latinos you had the African Americans and there's the one scene where Freddy Krueger I think it's I uh, the name the name of the girl um but she, I'm pretty sure wasn't she in TLC or I forget what what uh, band she was in she's an R and B group I I believe so. I've got. But he's looking at her. He's looking at the. I think it was a white nerdy guy, and he looks back at her and goes, "What, Nick? Mm, dark meat like that." <laughs> the whole theater just goes, "Oh!" Well, half of the theater <laughs> laughed, and then the other theater went, "Oh!" No. <laughs> Those are the other people like, "Oh, bitch, get the hell out of there!" <laughs> and that that was fun, you know. I like mm-hmm. the idea of like, you know. Freddy, Freddy's weakened by fire because you know he's burned alive, and mm-hmm. Jason's weakened by water because he's yep. drowned to death. So I thought that was a, you know, the fire and the water against each other can't, you know, the elements. Yep, and then the fact that um, uh, Freddy was able to get to Jason by doing nightmares and visions of Freddy's mo- of Jason's mom, mm-hmm. it, it worked on so many levels. It was goofy, it was funny, and pretty. Huh. Pretty violent and gory, yeah, gory, yeah, popcorn. It's movie. a Friday the Thirteenth, um, friggin' uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. You're, yep. you're not going in there for high class art and yep. spills and thrills. You know, you're going in there to be entertained. So I'd have to say it was definitely delivered. it was definitely well worth the wait. Mm-hmm. Well, since that, what year was it that Nintendo Power had that article with the drawing of Freddy and Jason in it about the Freddy vs. Jason movie? I forget, but I just remember. Wasn't it like Friday? Wasn't it like uh, Jason takes Manhattan, where the Freddy's glove grabs it and no, that, uh, it's the... Jason goes to hell. Oh yeah, it's Jason goes to hell. Like Fred, Dragons of Thunder. So everybody thought, oh man, it's finally gonna happen. And it's just like, but uh, yeah, I think even before that was that article in Nintendo Power talking about it, and it's just like I remember reading that as a little kid going, "That's going to be awesome." Yeah, and it's like twenty years later. <laughs> They were the forbidden fruit of our youth. You know, mm-hmm. you couldn't, you you would get them on TV, but they would be heavily edited. Oh you yeah, have to see that like someone had, you know, rented the VHS copy or yeah. something like that. You know, that your neighbors' uh, parents didn't give a shit about what their kids watched. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's like, oh man, you're gonna go over there and you're gonna marathon that damn thing. Yep. <laughs> so, today's episode, been talking about for a while. We wanted to have. Uh, uh, Mr. Sergeant Jamma uh, join in with us, but fortunately, you know, he's he's out doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about the world's first 24-bit video arcade system, simply known as the Neo Geo. Yep. We've been... Hopefully, uh, you got the music in the beginning of it, so I'll send that to you. Yep, send the music. We've been, for this past month, basically celebrating... It's been like our own little Neo Geo month with Neo Geo related videos and stuff like that. So we figured why not do a podcast about the Neo Geo. Oh, yes, indeed. And I have a feeling that both you and I, Nick, our first experiences with the Neo Geo happened in the same place. Oh, yeah. God, where is that machine now? I only (laughs) knew. Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference of like, you know, going out and buying you know, a big red Neo Geo four slot unit, you know? Yep. But to have the one that you played that you grew up on, the, you one, know, that would, the one that popped your cherry, mm-hmm. that would be the one. And we're obviously talking about in the Sunbet Mall over in uh, Sayville, Long Island, is uh, there was an arcade that was simply called... Wow, what, the... okay, once again, we are, I'm wrong. We did really? not. Which one was yours? The Ground Round. Oh, I never went to that. I didn't go to the Ground Round as often as you did. 
but it's the uh, same little thing. That yeah, it's literally that, right right across the street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah my, for me, it was the, the um, it was right the subway. Okay, yours was the subway. I I never I've only went to that arcade like maybe once or twice. Mm-hmm. The subway one. I went there more times than I could count because my parents would go food shopping at the path. Yep. So, you know, they wouldn't get rid of me until they gave me like, you know, two bucks. <laughs> so I go to the damn arcade. Go to the arcade. See, we never went grocery shopping there because we live closer to other supermarkets. <laughs> and I've, I honestly, I've never met someone who purposely would go to the Sunvet Mall for the mall. Exactly. <laughs> and it's it's even worse now. Oh god, it's a it's a it's a it's a shame. I remember I've gone there once or twice for there was I think a Radio Shack in there. That's gone. <laughs> yep. And that was gone. That was gone before the whole recent um uh stretch of them uh burning out all the stores and you know turning them mm-hmm. into sprint shops now. Then then there was um a craft store, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then occasionally they would have like a meet Santa or the Easter Bunny set up. Yeah, they always have that. Yeah, so th- those are usually the three reasons I've only, as a kid, gone there. Yeah. And they so got rid of the dollar store. They got rid of the mm-hmm. the Hallmark. Dive they got rid of the dollar store. Yeah, the dollar. Store. I was surprised at that. It's like that's where, that's that's where um. This is later, years later, not as a kid, but more as an adult. That's where I got my copy of the David Lee Roth autobiography. Because <laughs> I think it's called like Crazy in the Heat or something like that. Bro, fuck. <laughs> yeah. The classics of American literature. <laughs> only on the arcade hunters. If, so, I, if I, I got say, if I remember correctly, one of the pictures included, I think it's him with a bottle of whiskey walking away with like two female midgets. <laughs> or little people. You have to be politically correct here on the Arcade Hunters. And I'm sure they, they left equally satisfied. <laughs> from Diamond Dave. <laughs> so glad I got to see them perform live at Madison Square Garden. That was awesome when they, they did the reunion. You mm-hmm. know, the only thing that sucked was, you know, you know, they had they didn't have the they didn't have the bass player, they had uh, Wolfgang mm-hmm. filled in. Because he um was it um Michael Anthony has the um the terrible distinction of being uh, Sammy Hagar's friend, so they kicked them out. Yeah, but it was funny. We're sitting there, and these these two guys from Australia go, "Hey, is this a big deal?" Like, you're here. <laughs> you, you flew all the way from Australia. It's like, you tell me. I'm like, oh, we we're, we feel like we're like we're the only two uh, Van Halen fans in all of Australia. It's like, no, this is huge. <laughs> it's like for me, it was big because I remember um, when Van Halen went around, they would. Doing um, shit. What was the, what's the one with the 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 samurai the samurai samurais the Siamese twin on the cover? I forget the name of it. I it's forget one, too. It's one of the last ones with um, with Sammy. And mm-hmm. I remember wanting to go. And, you know, I just gotten in junior high school, and my mom told me you're too young to go there by yourself. You know, I don't trust you going there with your brother and his friends. We'll mm-hmm. go the next time they come around, and they broke up. <laughs> and I don't uh, think the Gary Sharon version came around. I don't even think they really went on tour with Gary Sharon because it was that bad. <laughs> but for you, when you played it at the ground round, did they have it at when the Neo Geo first, you know, came on the scene? Did they have the four originals? Um, these are the games I remember. They had Magician Lord. Mm-hmm. They had um, is it Turf Masters? No, that's Top Player's Golf. Turf top... Masters was later. Okay. I, I I don't remember what golf game, but it was a golf game. Yes. I believe they had a fighting game. I don't remember what. And then they had, is it Ninja Combat? Is that the beat-em-up yes. one? Ninja Combat. Yep, I, I sometimes mix up Ninja Combat and Ninja Commandos. Yep, and Ninja Combat. I'm pretty sure, like, all of them at the start all came with those four. They had, mm-hmm. like... Uh, baseball stars was one of them. Oh no, that's right. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a um, fighting game. It was baseball stars. Yeah, baseball that's stars what was in there. Yep. Or baseball stars, professional, <laughs> real, dynamic. I, I own it, so I can do it. I remember the the cutscene for that. I I wasn't a big fan of baseball games, so I never played it. 
I would just watch it and look at the graphics back. That looks like a freaking cartoon. Yeah. And then I'd put my money and play Magician Lord and die yep. before I make it to the end of the first stage. Uh, what imprudence, you human being. Face your <laughs> trial, by God. But Ninja Com English. Ninja Combat was the one that I put the most quarters in at the ground round. And say, and well, that... You tell, that... People, you tell people, man, there's this game that mm -hmm. you play, and you turn into a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I, I was going to say, I love beat em up so I was obsessed with that game because the graphics look cool, they were ninjas, and like you said, it was just awesome. The only thing, it's funny, like, many, many years later, I had a chance to play it again, and I just, oh, I love this game. And I remember playing again and going, oh. Oh, I'm getting, I'm sorry, I'm getting Ninja Combat confused with Sengoku. Sengoku. Oh, okay. Turn into a dog. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, um, Ninja Combat, you did like a movement of dragon, flame dragon or something mm -hmm. right around on the screen. Yep. You're throwing shurikens, I think it was, or ninja stars or whatever. Mm hmm But it had that really cool opening with the um what are those Asian buildings? Is it a pagoda? I think you're getting it confused with um because that's the opening of it's like they're floating in the sky, the pagodas. No, no, That's, no. Oh, no, oh. no, 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 no. It's a... Let me pull up. It, it's it's a big one. It's like the one in... Um... It's the ones in Godzilla that he destroys every... Yeah, year. yeah, yeah. It kind of pops up and it's like at They always call it pagodas. That, that's a... I forget what they say. Or like the, the, the shrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think shrine. Because I know the one in um, Sengoku has the uh, the floating uh, pagodas and uh, like they're almost like... Even though they're they're like... You know, Japanese, it still looks like they're aliens from, like, mm -hmm. another another planet, and they dive down, and they start attacking everybody. Yeah. But that was the most ingenious thing about the Neo Geo, is that when it came out, it was this option that the operators had. They could buy multiple-sized uh, versions for yep. whatever your location was. So, you know, very rarely I would ever see a single-slot one. Yeah. No, one that had been, or, you know, ones that had been converted. Like, I think later on down the line, like when we would go to um, Sports Plus, they had a solo one with Metal Slot. And I even seen someone had one that was, that is just a puzzle bottle or bust a mm -hmm. move. And, you know, uh, one of the, I, I wish I would have went in there and gave the guy, I would have just said, he has $250, give me that. They had like the, the miniature two slot ones, what they call the Goldie Cabinets. Mm -hmm. And then there's the ones that we know, the uh, four slot big reds. Yep. And then there for the high rollers, they had the six slot ones. That every time if you go on the neogeo.com, you hear horror stories because people it it always starts out the same way. Someone writes in, they say how excited they are, they got a kill of a deal, <laughs> they got a six slot Neo Geo. And oh my god, I'm so excited. I can't wait to get this. I had so many fond memories playing this as a kid. The guy even threw in a whole stack of games. I can't <laughs> wait to get this home. Guess what happens? Two weeks later, he puts up puts it up for sale. It's in my garage. I can't fit it into the house. <laughs> oh, which one are you playing? I can't hear it. Oh, I'll turn it up. Then turn to Ninja Combat. <laughs> Yep, you forgot that, like, funky... Ninja Combat! <laughs> God, we have to put up 8-Man soon. Yep. Oh, God, I, forgot. I love 8-Man. I don't care what anyone says. To me, 8-Man... Not to get off topic from what you're saying. It's still kind of on topic. Yeah. It's a Neo Geo game. To me, 8-Man plays and feels like a Genesis game. Mm -hmm. But like a Genesis game on crack like a souped up steroid genesis game the yeah. art style the graphics the gameplay i love that game the only the only downside is the characters and everything really don't look like the characters from the actual 
was it comic and manga uh, manga and was it an anime too i think yes i'm pretty sure it was an anime and i think it all well, maybe it was a movie like an oav mm -hmm. i'll have to look it up i forget but, i haven't seen it in a long time yeah but when you see original artwork and then it's just, it looks on the character the outfit looks almost like um like a speed racer type outfit mm -hmm. like thin and slim like a like a onesie or a jumpsuit yep. and then when you play the game your character looks almost like a robot with like muscles and stuff. It's yeah. kind of odd. Where the hell did this come from? I've never gotten to play the um, what they consider the worst of all time on that one, which is also an anime-based game, which is the boxing game Legend of Success Joe. I've never gotten to play that one. I've never played that one either. I've heard it's. I've heard it's. Uh, it's quite the bad one. <laughs> So when you would go to the ground round, because I'm going to obviously have different takes because, yep. you know, as I said, like once a month we would go food shopping mm -hmm. at Pathmark. So I would always go in there and I would be seeing another uh, whenever they would switch out the game. So was it like that for you? Would you go to the ground round more often? Um, yeah, we used to go there quite a bit, be quite a bit. And ground round always had they had a row of arcade games right across from the bar, kind of tucked away in the corner. Right when you walked in to the left, when you first walk in the front doors, right to the left was a pinball machine or two. Straight ahead was where you would go and the hostess would seat you. And then to the right and around the corner were the arcade machines across from the bar. They, if I remember, as far as I remember, they never changed out the Neo Geo games. Oh. The four that they had in there were the four that remained in there. But that didn't matter to me because... As a little kid, seeing four games in one machine. Oh, yeah. That was mind-blowing. That, that was that was the thing. And not only that, it's this big red machine, colorful buttons, and then it had that mysterious memory card slot. Yep. And that used to... And I, I couldn't handle it. it. was I'm like, okay, so you're telling me there's four games that look awesome in here. There's a memory card slot... Headphone jack. Headphone jack. And it's just like, I, this is like the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's what, always turned up way too loud. Yep. Yeah, I remember looking at the memory card slot and going, what, what, what's this memory card then? What, what does it do? do? Can you bring the game home? Can you, can you, uh, do you put a new game in? I had no clue mm -hmm. what the hell it was. Well, I knew because I don't know. Did you ever watch? Of the original video power maybe bits and pieces because for the folks out there you know hopefully you're listening to arcade hunters you're a bit older you know for you know like before youtube took over everything and had all your video game entertainment on there there was a show that was called video power now a lot of people online will know it as a game show mm -hmm. where it had this really corny host named johnny arcade yeah that was his <laughs> name johnny arcade and it was made in Glen Cove on Long Island because it was sponsored by Acclaim. It was, like a, it was Acclaim's thing. So, and like, they would play games, like, on the NES, or sometimes they would put in a Genesis game or two, but mostly it was NES and Super Nintendo games. Yep. And then they had the run through the Power Mall, and every game in the mall was, like, Airwolf and, and Rambo. And, you know, the, the LJN and acclaimed stinkers were in there but you didn't care because it was you're running through a mall sticking stuff on a velcro suit yeah but the first season of video power was a cartoon and there's only one clip of it online and it is corny as shit it like it's very fruity looking but they would have it where it was you know johnny arcade would come out and he would tell you what the episode was and then it would be the cartoon and then after the cartoon was over, like, I guess the cartoon was only, like, ten minutes long, they would have... Stop it. <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk over that. <laughs> Turn it off. Oh, it's video power. Like, like... Yeah. Um... Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I'm watching. It's pretty... Like I said, I barely got to see a lot of this stuff. That is... 
anything and everything that was good and bad about the late 80s, early 90s all wrapped up into a 45 second video. It's extreme. <laughs> but so, you know, one day they said, hey, Friday, they, he gets a, a they have like an answering machine mm -hmm. set up in there. And it's the guy that does the voice of Quicks the Tomato. Yep. I was just... Why in the hell is that a goddamn <laughs> <laughs> goddamn character? That they needed that many characters, so they had a the tomato. So the the character says, Hey, we're taking the week we're taking the day off. So Johnny, you can do whatever you want. And that's when all hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. Because he went to Spaceplex. <laughs> there was an episode where he went to Spaceplex, so he's playing all the new arcade games, he's playing G Lock, he's you remember that the did you ever see the guy on stilts that used to hand people quarters at space flex i've i don't remember that guy off the top of my head it was like their mascot it was like this big space guy <laughs> that was like walk around i was like holy shit okay so, i remember a big space guy i don't think i i don't think i put two and two together really oh, I, 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 to I was privy to meet that guy <laughs> but he goes on talking about there's a whole segment on the neo geo and I wish I had this because it would blow people's minds over on NeoGeo.com. <laughs> and it's basically him. It looked like he went to like Betson or something, mm -hmm. like a place that would, like a distributor. Yeah. So he was showing the actual units, like getting taken off, like the pallets, and they were getting them ready. And he's showing them, like, oh, I'm playing Ninja Combat. And he showed you how the memory card worked. And he takes the memory card out. And he goes, this is the Neo Geo AES, the home version. I'm like, <gasps> mm -hmm. they make it that you can play this at home? It's, and he's like, same, arc, same game that I played in the arcade, and it has the save on there. It has my high score. Everything from the game that I played before. And I'm like, you're shitting me. Like, I have to get this. And I remember showing it to my showing it to my brother. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. <laughs> I bring my mother in. Mom, look at this. Mom, look at this. My father comes home from work. Is like, Nick, I'm tired. I want I, I want to take my shoes off. No, no, Dad, look at this. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's like, oh, you want another damn video game? <laughs> this is Nintendo enough? But this, I think that was the thing. The blessing for them was they came out. Um, I'm pretty sure they came out after the Genesis, but before the super nintendo so the super nintendo was just like a twinkle in everybody's eye mm -hmm. with the neo geo came out and then you found out the hard truth about the neo geo oh my god and that's not counting also the magazine articles that they had you know it, you know if you're at egm or game pro where mm -hmm. the this is where i'm going to start splicing in footage of you know the hot the, the infamous hot dog ad mm -hmm. it has like if you're playing nec sega or Nintendo, you're just a weenie. But <laughs> if you're playing Neo Geo, you're a real hot dog. <laughs> and it's got like all the fix. It looks like a Chicago dog with all the fixins on it. And pretty much the one of the most uh, other ones is there's a a woman in like nightgown, like negligees, <laughs> and she's like sitting there, and the guy is playing um shit. What the hell's the game? Cyberlip. Mm -hmm. And the way he's standing, he's standing off to the side of the TV, and the Enemy in Cyberlip looks like it looks like a penis monster, <laughs> and he's like this. He's got like the controller on his lap, <laughs> like he's playing with himself, and it's got the penis monster on the TV, and the woman's just sitting there neglected, and she says, "It used to be he couldn't keep his hands off of me." I remember that. Yep. Oh my god, I remember and that. The, the bigger, better, better with the with the uh, the snarling dog on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and all that stuff. And then you go to the store that might have it. I'm pretty sure one of the only ones that had it here in the Long Island area was Peace, the, was uh, Nobody Beats the Wiz, the Wiz. right? Yep, the Wiz over in the um, Patrog, in Patrog Shopping Center. It used to be the Wiz, and then there was also a service merchandise in that yep. same shopping center. There's Best Buy there now. And I remember going to the Wiz as a kid and stopping and staring at it because the neo geo it wasn't this was crazy it wasn't just out if you looked up on top of the like aisle rafters like um where the where the displays are the top where the extra stock is you'd yep. see a couple boxes for the aes 
and then a couple stacks of games. And that was basically it. Yep. They had they didn't have if I remember correctly, they didn't have a display unit. No. Nope. Didn't have a place you could play it. It was just sitting up. The arcade there. was the only place that you could play it. They yep. didn't really have like yep. stuff like that in the stores. Yep, it was just sitting up there, and the only way you would know is if you saw it and knew what you were looking at it, or if you asked. And when I was in school, the Neo Geo AES was this mythical video game console that no one had, because it was so expensive. Everyone would talk, or I don't even know if this was actually how much it was, but everyone would say the system was six or eight hundred dollars, and, <laughs> and, and, and that games are two hundred dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. And that is the best system ever. You yeah. know, no one's ever played a frigging game on it. On on the actual AS. You know, well, you know, you're playing well, the same well, game. Yeah, but here's the thing. We didn't put two and two together knowing that, okay, the game in the arcade is the game you play at home. Yes. We didn't know that. We just thought it was just... Well, the, I had the video system. power, motherfucker. I know, uh -huh. I know. But... I remember in elementary school there was one kid who I was who I became friends with at the time I wasn't really friends with and rumors used to always go around that oh he's rich he's rich he gets every he gets he has all the video game systems he's rich and rumors are going around oh he has a Neo Geo he has all the he has all the games for it he, he's a spoiled brat blah blah blah, blah. and then and I think it was in high school or college, I became friends with them. And I actually said, I'm like, look, I, I have to ask you this. When we were in like fourth and fifth grade, rumors would fly around that you owned a Neo Geo. I'm like, did you really own a Neo Geo when it was out? He's like, are you kidding me? No way in hell. Yeah. He's, he's like, he's like, I never owned one. He's like, that, that was so expensive. I'm like, but rumors are also go around that you rich and had like every video game system. He's like, I used to work and do odd jobs and mow people's lawns and save up <laughs> money to buy the systems. It's like, yeah, I got a Super Nintendo when it came out because I mowed like 50 lawns. Yep. So that was, that was just a funny side story. It's like, oh, it's like, he's like, yeah, it's like, I heard about those rumors about me. It's like, it's crazy. But yeah, that... yeah, I'm playing Ninja Combat and you're sitting back home playing your Super Mario. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even know Ninja Combat was on yeah. the Neo Geo AES as a kid. You kidding me? I just knew it was expensive. Yeah. I didn't even know that it was the same games in the arcade. I didn't even know they were the same companies back then. Yeah. I didn't have video power. Well, I used to read all the stupid magazines because you had Nintendo Power, but you know Nintendo Power. I'm, I'm pretty sure the word is myopic point, yeah. where it's just like, oh yeah, there, there. We went to the uh, Consumer Electronics Show, and there was this other company showing off something with a with a blue rodent that runs around really fast. But mm -hmm. you don't really want to know about that. You want to know about the VR32. That's what you want to know about. <laughs> yep. That's that's the thing that the kids crave. They want their Virtual Boy. See, it's it's funny i used to have to, i used to ride my bike to the cv local cvs and that's where i would look through video game magazines because i never had a subscription mm -hmm. to a video game magazine and i never had money to buy them so i would be the loiterer yeah. over in because the, the cvs they have it in the back corner was where they'd have the the magazine section i would just go back there with my one friend we just sit there and read the game pros and everything yeah. And then my other friend got Nintendo Power, so I would always read them at his house. Yeah, I got into I got the very first issue of Nintendo Power because my uh, friend, he was a big Sega fan, so he mm -hmm. had all the Sega stuff. But his uncle, who lived with him at the time, he had um, he was he was like he was on some bad times, so he ended up living at the at their house with mm -hmm. his uh, wife. He was a Nintendo fan, and he had gotten like he he told me like he had the Fun Club newsletter that used to come before mm -hmm. the um the, the magazine came out and then you know i go over there and say hey uncle joe how you doing he's like oh i'm doing good i said anything new on on the lolo front like he used to play him and his wife used to play adventures of lolo yeah where you know it didn't have the password save feature so they would leave the nintendo on with the door open with the fan blowing into the nintendo <laughs> so it wouldn't it wouldn't uh burn down burn down the house they were saying Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I just got this, and I'm looking at this thing with, like, the Claymation Mario mm -hmm. 2 on the cover. And I was like, uh, is there a card in the back that I can send away to get one? And I was like, yeah, here, take it. 
like that. And I remember giving it to my mom. Mom, See, look at this. I had look at the power. I had. It's gone now. I wish it wasn't. I went to. It was like a church yard sale thrift store, and there was a box filled with Nintendo Power, starting at the first one. I think it was up to like number fifty. It was like it was insane. It included like it was from it included the Super Mario Brother three guide, included the um, sticker sheets for the controllers and the Game Boy, like everything. And it was just all in pristine condition. I think I bought it all for like four dollars. There you go. But it's but that was when I was young. That was younger. Now it's long gone. I don't even know what yeah. happened to it. It's probably one of the basement flooding things. Mm-hmm. But for me with the Neo Geo, I was as I said, you know, we would go to Pathmark once a month. And we would go in there, and, you know, the games would change around, but mm-hmm. they would always leave the Neo Geo. You know, they would always they'd get a different pinball machine, mm-hmm. you know, a different fighting game would come in and out. But the Neo Geo always stayed, and they always rotated the games around. So I got to see stuff like Blue's Journey, you know, the Magician Lords, yep. uh, both the, uh, the first two Sengoku's, uh, Super Baseball 2020 mm-hmm. with the robotic baseball players. Fatal Fury, Art of Fighting, and then like all hell started breaking loose as you get more into the 90s because the one guy that used to run the arcade was this big fat guy, mm-hmm. huge, huge mountain of a man. And this guy, that was his favorite thing. So that's probably a major reason why they kept it. So Samurai Showdown comes out. Mm-hmm. He is, hu- you know, he's supposed to be minding the store. He is there next to the the machine, and everybody's playing the hell out of it. Every you could not, you had to like wait. You had to do the old school quarter line. Mm-hmm. Everybody had to wait to get onto that just to play that Samurai Showdown. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, oh my god! Like you know, seeing the guy get cut in half, and then the the medics come out and they drag your carcass off the yeah, yeah. off the battlefield, and you know the. The guy's throwing ceremonial rice at you and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, oh my god, this is awesome. And that and that game, there are so many rumors going going around about about um the Genesis port mm-hmm. for the first Samurai Showdown. I remember my one friend we had Mortal Kombat 2, my other friend did not. Yeah. We used to spend all the time playing Mortal Kombat 2. Love Mortal Kombat 2. He kept talking about this game, Samurai Showdown. It's awesome, it's awesome, it's awesome. It's so it's so much bloody and violent, you can cut off each other's heads. So, obviously, you can't do that. Yeah. That's not a move. The Genesis version is not bloody at all. He was just trying to... He was just so pissed that he did not have Mortal Kombat 2... Mm-hmm. He had Samurai Showdown on the Genesis. Yeah. Which, you know, since I was reading EGM, all I heard was like, whenever those, whenever the home ports would come out, yep. they were just like, it's not the same. Stay stay in the arcade. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to bother with this. But exactly. I remember 1994, all hell broke loose. Because walk into the arcade and they got it, King of Fighters 94. Mm-hmm. And you see it on the screen, you see... Terry, Terry, Joe, and Andy, like this, like taunting, and it cuts, and then it's, oh my god, the guys from Art of Fighting? Like, mm-hmm. they're all in one game together? Mm-hmm. Like, this is awesome! Oh my god, they put all the all of the characters all together in one game. And, and then they do the yearly sequel, but that's not what really, you know, that tantalized me. What was uh, it? it was, what was it, it was that my. tantalized you? It was my. Sweet, <laughs> sweet my. <laughs> all you would do, all I would do was I would put my money in. I would go to, I would select the England team. Mm-hmm. That's what the, that was their, uh, that was their country. They represented England. And I would leave the cursor on my and watch her bounce. <laughs> and and the, the, I still, you know, the King of Fighters 94 has, and I'm just like, like, <sighs> <sighs> I'm like the you know like the the kid in Hey Arnold that has the hots for Helga. Yeah. That just sits there and goes, ah, ah, 
Uh, like the, the fat guy has to get out from behind the cage at the and time then I, at the time at our arcade back ah oh, jeez that fat kid's whacking off again to the arcade machine get out of here get out of here precious put your pesky back in your pants there you know <laughs> and then the game would start and i'm just like i can't use this character for shit but i like to watch her bounce <laughs> You know, I don't think I got to play like a lot of like the the like last blade. You know, we only got to play later in the lifespan of the system. And the thing with the Neo Geo that a lot of people, some of the people don't know, it's the that and the Atari Twenty Six Hundred are the two longest running systems mm -hmm. of all time. I think the Atari Twenty Six Hundred beats it by like a few months. Because I, I forget, I have to see what the, the timeline is, because I know when whenever Samurai Showdown 5 Special came out, the very last game, you know, very last official game, and then I think the last official game on the Atari 2600 was Ghostbusters 2. And I think it's only like two or three months that, that the Atari 2600 beat it out by. But that just shows you just how they stuck around with that. There's a Ghostbusters 2 on the Atari 2600. And it sucks. All you do is you go down the um, the sewer pipe as right. And the things come out after you. Really? I downloaded the ROM of it and I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, they let this go through. Oh, what are you putting on? I hear the clickety clack. I'm, I'm just looking up Ghostbusters 2 Atari. I'm not there playing music. <laughs> and he's getting text. It's very popular. No, I was just turning it off. So I'm trying. To, so, what are some other Neo Geo standouts for you, Mister Gerard? What other games, like if, like we did our article for Edge Magazine, ding, 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 which, uh, <laughs> y yes, we're gonna get to that at the end. I'm sorry. Somebody, so instantly, someone just skipped right to the end of the podcast to hear me announce the winners. But you know, if there was like a cert certain game that you could own on the system, regardless of the dollar amount, because you know. Good luck with some of the prices on a lot of the games, especially mm -hmm. on AES. Uh, it's tough because... I think uh, with Metal Slug, we should just do its own episode. Metal Slug should get its own episode. We should just well, talk well, about... Well, that's the thing. That's what makes it tough. Um, there were... A lot of people are very passionate about the Neo Geo MVS. But I feel that personally... The genre of games, it's like they have like a very, very small, very small handful of shmups. Mm -hmm. And then but I, the ones that are on there are very good. But see, that's the thing. I feel that a lot of the Neo Geo fan base grab onto those few games and swear that they're the best when some of them are good, but they don't, they don't pop up at the top of my list of for favorite shmups yeah i think it's almost like that that whole fanboyism i think i think because there's only a few of this genre of game mm -hmm. they love it if that makes sense i don't probably yeah there's a lot of viewpoint fans out there and i know some... I'm pissing off a lot of people like for example beat em star yeah beat em, beat em ups as far as from all the games I played, there really are no good beat em ups on the MVS. Yeah. I mean, they don't even hold a they don't even hold a matchstick to Konami and Capcom's beat em ups. The only one that for me, like when and it sucks because it's such a late release game and it's very hard mm -hmm. to come by, is the third Sengoku because it has but, the combo features in it. True, but even that game, if you really sit down and play it feels mediocre it's not a game that you can sit down and play over and over again yeah. it's not like turtles in time mm -hmm. that's a game that you pop it in you can play it. even the original ninja turtles arcade game because i remember i borrowed that from sergeant jamma and i'm thinking oh boy this i love beat-em-ups i never played and that played this before i'm like i'm finally going to play the best beat-em-up on the mvs and i'm playing it playing i'm like wow okay this is just kind of okay yeah. In comparison, because I'm used to, even if even I had the cool combo system, I was always used to the one like there's like the Simpsons game. I can play that all day. Turtles in Time all day. 
uh, regular Ninja Turtles all day. And then even like um, Final Fight, I can play forever. It just, it was lacking something. And I feel there's a couple genres that ne that um on the Neo Geo that they completely own. And then there's some of the other genres and it's like, eh. But if you're a Neo Geo fan, you latch on to everything. I'm getting some audio everything. distortion on your end. I don't know if it's... Um, he, uh, I, are you getting audio distortion from me? Because you're sounding no, all... No, <clears throat> no, I'm not. Is that better? I hope so. Does that sound better oh, to you? In advance. Does that sound better to you? It's still, you still sound a little muffly. I don't know why. What the f How about now? Uh, say a long run-on sentence or something. A long run on sentence that just goes on and 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 on. Yeah, it was weird. It sounded like you were auto tuned, like Kanye West on the fucking fortieth anniversary Saturday Night Live is going. It's like, yeah, it can fix your pitch, but not if your voice has phlegm in it. It sounded awful. Okay, it might have been the I did I played with the button on the back of the mic. Yeah, because has the different settings. Does it sound better now? Does it sound better now? Yes, much. Okay. But, like, for example, I think Neo Geo owns fighting games. Mm -hmm. I think the Neo Geo has, hands down, if not one, multiple fighting games that are that are the best. Mm -hmm. Like, Garou Mark of the Wolves is my favorite fighting game ever, period. I like it better than any other Capcom fighting game. Or any other fighting That'll game. That'll be the next one. Uh, You're still game. breaking up. You uh, sound... What the f I don't know what you're doing. You sound like a... Uh... I'm doing nothing. Open. Night, White Knight the game. Yeah, exactly. But I think fighting games and even run and gun games, I think those are the bread and butter of the Neo mm -hmm. Geo. Even if the run and gun games tend to be only one series. Yeah. But they are, hand, I think, hands down the best in that genre. And exactly. then the fighting games, you have Garou Mark of the Wolves, my favorite fighting game of all time. You have a whole slew of excellent, excellent King of Fighters games. Metal and, Slug. Yep, Metal Slug for the running guns. And I also, we also would be reminiscent if we did not talk about the ladies' choice, the ladies' oh, favorites. Puzzle Bobble. Puzzle Bobble. Yep. Or Bust a Move. Yep. Anytime there is a Neo Geo cabinet, if there is a young lady... Or a lady of any age, mm -hmm. guaranteed. Mo nine times out of ten, they're playing Bust a Move. Yep. On there, they everybody just loves that game. Or if there's a couple on it, they're playing Bust a Move uh, competitively. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, they're always playing that game because that's a game that I think just it transcends. I was just gonna say it transcends gender. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves it. You have the cute. You have the cutesy characters. You have the um, seemingly, seemingly um, easy gameplay. In yeah, I was just... gonna say t uh, tame. It's non-violent. There's not. It, you're not fighting. You're not beating each other up. Which I think is why, like all the, you know, the the iPhone games are so. You know, all your Candy Crush yep. and your all that other stuff is so popular because it's, it's just something that's easy. It's not violent. Anybody can get into it and pick up yep. and play it, and it just progressively gets harder. And instead of charging people a quarter for, you know, another life on mm -hmm. it, it's like, oh, yeah, you can buy your life packs or whatever it is, whatever the Candy Crush does does to people. I'm not even touching that thing with a 50-foot <laughs> pole. I don't have addictive tendencies, and why is your iP iPhone bill say it's $75? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But when we get into, like, you know, definitely for me, it is the competitive system. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why it's got those four fight buttons and the two joysticks yep. on it. Because we got, we uh, we did it the very first game for the Neo Geo month was Twinkle Star Sprites. Yep. Which, very, very angry that um, they do the, um, the games over in Japan on the PSN service. Mm -hmm. They just put on... Um, King of Fighters, I think Neo Wave yep. got put on there. Neo Geo Battle Coliseum and Twinkle Star Sprites Little Petite Princess. 
all for like 10 bucks each. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I got to figure out, I got to go through the thing and how to make a um, Japanese account and buy a, um, like an instant Japanese points card. Mm -hmm. I do have it. I have a Japanese account, but I have to set it up with the, uh, with the point credit. Yeah. Because I want, I want to play Twinkle Star again. <laughs> and play it and I don't know, I don't know if it will, it, it'll give you the access to the, um, online, the extra, yeah. No, it won't, it won't, I don't think it'll play online, but I want to see if it, when, after you beat the game, mm -hmm. you get access to the original arcade version, which is a pretty shitty port, but it's cool because it, it has the, um, the extra animated intro that they mm -hmm. added into the Saturn version that has the, um, the little girl turning into an adult and it shows her back arching and her jugs getting bigger. I was like, uh, <laughs> like, that's not what I thought of that when I, when I was <laughs> playing this game, but thank you. Very... Thank you, ADK. Oh, thank you, Japan. That's why it was their last game. They went all out and said, <laughs> oh, we'll give all the Moe, we'll put the last bit of fan service in with some, uh, <laughs> some expanding boobies. <laughs> but, and then another game, a game that has tripled in price. The one known only as, if you're a Botchamania fan, it means something else. It means the sound of a trap fart. Windjammers, yep. flying power disc. I think uh, Darren Young from the WWE posted a photo. He was at a barcade, and the barcade had a Neo Geo with Windjammers running in it. Mm -hmm. And I'll I'll put I'll I'll try to see if I can get the photo of him. He's like ah, it's like oh my god, they have wind jammers at this place. <laughs> there is a game, holy shit, that you play it one player and you're like, mm -hmm. eh, it's fun. But you play that with two players. Oh god, yeah. Oh my god, uh, Dave from Arcade.com was telling me that they they play that at um down in uh at Magfest. Mm -hmm. And they, they get a room full of people going, jam, jam, jam. Like, mm -hmm. And they start playing against each other. So it gets pretty insane. I was like, God, dude, why does the game have to be so expensive? I should have got it when I got into the hobby. It was like 50, 60 bucks. Uh, yeah, I know. It was one of those games that was between 60 and 80, always. I was trying to stay away from those $80 games. I was going for the 50s. I was giving, going for the 40s and the 20s and stuff like that. That's what I was going for. And then I was just like, oh, my God, no. Yeah. Now, like, the only thing with, like, because the Neo Geo is an arcade system. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they lack are role-playing and adventure games. I mean, you, like, you'll have something like Cross Swords yeah, and stuff say. like that, which is more like a like a first-person beat-em-up, like, yeah. kind of like Super Spy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But unless you have a Japanese um, Neo Geo CD with Samurai Spirits RPG... You know, they really didn't um, mm -hmm. go into that into those genres until they started getting onto the Neo Geo Pocket Color, where they had stuff like Hard Fighters Clash. Yep. Yeah. You know? Now that now for including Pocket Color in our discussion, that's a system that I love. Mm -hmm. I'm what, so glad I got that thing. I have to get it again. Mine is mine got left in Japan, but oh. <laughs> but I just I love the Metal Slug games on it. The thing shot up in price now because now everybody knows. Like, hey, you want you want something good that's not a Game Boy or a Game Gear and has has decent battery life and a nice decent library of games? Eh, try this out. And yeah. now all the games are starting to go up for like really high prices now. Yeah, I remember you. I think it was sixty bucks for that um packing deal where it was the system and like three or four games. Yeah, they called it the Pocket Color Arcade at um at GameStop. Where you yep. bought, I think it was like seventy or sixty bucks, mm -hmm. and it came with a system, and it was only one color system. I remember people on NeoGeo.com were like, "Well, I've had the camouflage one." I was just like, "Good for you!" <laughs> and I'm like, how much did you pay for that? I paid sixty dollars. I got the console. It works perfect, and I got six games. I had the camouflage. And they're good. And I, had, they're... I, I had the camouflage one. Yeah. I think. And I, they're good I, games. I, I, I got it brand new. I think I paid thirty for it. Yeah. So I, That's because I was in good. Japan. Yeah. Where they're more prevalent, yeah. unlike here. Oh. I, I don't even... When that thing came out, I barely even saw the pocket color. Mm -hmm. Barely. They they didn't even make a dent. And it was a shame because they had such a... Oh, my God. One of my favorite fighting games of all time is SNK versus Capcom Match of the Millennium on that. Yep. Oh, my God. How they were able to pull that off 
where they said, okay, yeah, we only have two buttons on the console, so we'll make it, if you tap the button, it's a light punch. If you hold, if you tap, if you hold the button, it's a, it's a heavy attack. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need, and it works pretty damn, so damn good. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and, and it, there's a lot of replay with it, and I mean, I still haven't um, gotten enough points to unlock all the characters, and I've been playing it for years. Mm -hmm. You know, unlockable characters, bonus games and minis and stuff on it. It's it's I, I love that game. Now the two metal slugs on there are fun. There's uh, I think the first one has the digitized speech in it. Yeah. Right. It, it, it has a different announcer, so it's not rocket launcher. <laughs> like if you get a grenade, he says pineapple. For some reason, pineapple. And then um. What I wish I would have got it is uh, Gal's Panic. That game got yeah, or not Gal's Panic. That that's the that's that's, that's Gal's that's, Fighter. Gal's Fighter. Gal's Panic yeah. is that. Uh, Gal's Panic is the quicks game. Yeah. No kicks, because it's get your kicks. Like get your kicks on Route sixty six. That's how we know it. That's how that's how it's correctly pronounced. But man, Gal's Gal's Fighter went up, for, went up insane in the price range. Mm -hmm. The last one that I got, I got it from friggin' Video Games New York of all places. I got it for like $30, brand new. I've never seen like a brand new Neo Geo game, Neo Geo Pocket Color game in the box. I got Magical Drop Pocket. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I love Magical Drop. That's another game that, that everybody loves, you know, regardless of your age, gender, creed, whatever you like. It, Magical Drop 2 and 3 from Data East. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. And I, I remember going to Otakon where we were talking to one of the guys and we're like, hey man, we gotta have a magical drop game. Like, he's like, do you have magical drop three? He goes, oh yeah, I'll bring it. Mm -hmm. And then you see people play the game and like, I don't know, you can move the little character around on the bottom that fast because it's a puzzle. For the people that haven't played it, I'll put the photo if you're watching it on YouTube, is, you know, a little clown that runs around the bottom and you pick up the balls and you throw the balls and you have to get them in uh, certain colors. Mm -hmm. and you send a chain reaction over to the next player. And it just gets absolutely insane with the chain reactions and all stuff bouncing back and forth. Same game. Lots of fun. Yep, that and Twinkle Star were big hits at mm -hmm. Otakon. As we said, we were the we were the converts of Twinkle mm -hmm. Star. Yep. Because we would get there. I forget. Um, God damn it, I'm going to forget the guy's name that used to run the... Um, I think it was Evil Mike that used to run. He was one of the guys that helped run the Otakon game room. I would always say to him, "Make sure you have a, a, a petite princess or or a um, you know a consularized Neo Geo for for Twinkle Star." And he'd always make sure he had Twinkle Star for us. And he'd put it like he always put it at like the front of the room where you would walk in, mm -hmm. and it was the same thing every year. Same you'd, reactions. Oh, <laughs> same reaction. You'd either have people that knew what the game was, and they would go, they would run over and steal a chair from a game that someone wasn't playing. Like I think they had Ibra. Yeah. One year, because I just remember, like, like what the hell is this game? And like, oh yeah, it gets harder if you don't die. Uh, like what? <laughs> like <laughs> with Ibra. So you know, like all of a sudden, like no one had a chair for like certain games. So everybody would just come over and play Twinkle, and you would always get these guys that were too cool for the room. You know. Yeah. It doesn't matter that you're at an anime convention with everybody dressed up in <laughs> costumes. You're going to be the one douchebag that thinks you're <laughs> higher than everybody else. So they see this game that is, for all intents and purposes, just pink. Yep. The whole game is just pink. Pastel. Sugar, pastel. Sugar color. Happy-go-lucky. Even when you blow the things up, they have a smile on their face. Mm -hmm. And they burst in little um, you know, confetti. And stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's all you know, like this game. You know, you get to oh, uh, this game's gay. I'll <laughs> play this game. Game gay. You got the gay. I was just like, okay. Uh, you want to try it before you uh call me a little fruity over there, Lara? <laughs> it's like, did Ichigo just call me gay? Yeah. <laughs> but you, you little douche canoe, come over here and play the game. So a couple of people like, uh, I don't know. So it was either like, oh, that's good, and they would walk away. And then the people that would stay, it was like, here, hold the game. Because you've played a shooter like Galaga, right? And he goes, yeah. So basically, 
you're on that side of the screen. You got to fire the button, and you have your bomb for your oh shit moments. Mm -hmm. So you got to blow those up like a chain reaction, like a puzzle game. Those will send fireballs over to the next guy. You have the choice of being to blow up the chain reaction with the fireballs, or you can sit there and try to shoot everything that comes towards you. And I'm like, uh, okay. And it takes them like two or three rounds to get into it, but once they get into it, they don't get up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that with every... I, that's a, like... They have... Because like S and K absorbed 80K. So I don't know why. Why don't they just bring that back? Mm -hmm. you no, know, hopefully it does. It does good now that they brought it onto um, that PlayStation Network. Yeah, that people can download it. Because that, that I'm telling you, like that'll be one of the things that I download. I'm pretty sure NCSX does that, where you can um, go onto their site and you can get a points card. You can get like a twenty dollar point card, mm -hmm. and they automatically send it to you. So you put the, the um, you put it in on your Japanese PlayStation account, and it'll automatically go through. So we get like a twenty dollar card that'll be like a two thousand yen mm -hmm. thing, and I think that's like one thousand yen for it. So that's you know that was right there or right off the bat. So I I get it. So is there anything else? Uh, I'm trying to how I, we are on time. I think we're I think we're about to hit the time mark. So before we go. Obviously, you might have known that um, we were doing a thing about the Edge magazine. Yep. And I said it in the podcast, and only one person replied to the one in the podcast. That was Cold Guy over on Twitter. And, like, it is ex exactly what we said with, um, with to Gerard, like, when we started doing the podcast on YouTube. We said that we have three groups of fans mm -hmm. or four groups of fans. We got people on YouTube, got people on Instagram and Twitter. And Tumblr. You know, I mean, I saw, like, how many people... I took a photo of French Toast Crunch, because French Toast Crunch came out in 95. Mm -hmm. And then I had just gotten in the mail, I had gotten the second part of the first season of Sailor Moon. Mm -hmm. So I put that in the picture. And then I was like, what else came out in 1995 around mm -hmm. that time? I was like, oh, I got my Tick Toys that I got from from uh, Pennsylvania. I got a... um, It was like this... I swear to God, I have to take a photo of it. There's like these... Uh, flea markets in Pennsylvania, and this one guy has a has has these tables, and they're just full of old tchotchkes. <laughs> and it's like the guy would r rummage through every McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's Happy Meal, Taco Bell Happy Meals, and had all the fast food premiums. And one section there was all tick figures, and I'm pretty sure it was Wendy's or Taco. I think it was Taco Bell. Had all the tick figures, and he had three of them, so I grabbed them all. So I, I put two of the tick figures in there, and then I was like, hmm, what else came out in 90, 95? <laughs> Earthbound! So I put Earthbound on top of the Sailor Moon, took a photo of the French Toast Crunch, and the tick. <laughs> and it blew up on friggin' Tumblr. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, like, you, th this photo has 35 likes. I was like, for what? <laughs> for Sailor Moon fans that like French Toast Crunch and the tick? <laughs> it's kind of a weird. Uh, and other people oh, are like, dude, sell me your Earthbound. Like, fuck you, it's my Earthbound. <laughs> so, I put the call out. I said, all you have to do is subscribe, like, or whatever, and say, Nick, give me a code. First guy in was called guy, Pat, you're in the bucket. Mm -hmm. Then we went over to YouTube. So I got Mr. Horseshoe. Mr. Horseshoe's in the bucket. Hurry and Hoosier from, from the Indiana, the good Hoosier daddy. <laughs> Wind does not from YouTube. We have Little Miss McD from from YouTube, and on uh, Instagram, the lone Instagram uh, account that followed us, we have Nemecade, N E M C A D E, and then over on Facebook, we got Rich Haxick and my good man Eddie Cox from the um. From uh, Flippers Variety and Amusements, he's the um, one of the technicians there. Who works with uh, the guy Dave. Mm -hmm. So, rummaging through, rummaging through. Gerard, tell me when to stop, and I'm gonna pick a name at random out of my bowl. Are you sure that's what you're playing with there? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, that's for later when uh, when the podcast is over. 
That's Arcade Hunters After Dark. I, I, I was going to say, are you going to pop in your King of Fighters 98? And... No, then that's 94. No, I know you said 94. Well, that 94. was one of the things that sucked about that uh, about the Bouncing Mind was like towards the season as it started getting on, like, I think like after 99 and 2000, yep. for some reason, they censored Mai mm -hmm. that she no longer bounced. So it looked weird. Like the animation was, she would still like it have their stance. Still it was animation. It wasn't fluid. But for some reason, Blue Mary was perfectly fine. <laughs> I was like, is it because she doesn't have like deep, deep, deep cleavage and she's wearing a whole shirt? <laughs> I don't, so like, why did one ca character get? Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay, and the winner is. Little Miss McD over on YouTube. I'm gonna have to send you a private message over on YouTube. Little Miss McD, you are the winner of the iPad code for the for the uh, Edge magazine. And now winner number two. Let's go through. Shuffling, one to stop. Shuffling, shuffling, mixing, mixing, shuffling. Getting up to the microphone. Stop. Stop. Eddie, Eddie Cox, you are the winner. So, Lil Miss McD over on <laughs> YouTube and Eddie Cox for over on Facebook, you are two winners. I will get back to you. You got it. Nick, send me a code. You are winners. Oh, my God. We're giving stuff away. Now, I have... Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. Now, and I... it doesn't end there because, <laughs> Gerard, you have more. I've... One of the things I always loved as a kid was prizes. It didn't matter how I would get them. Like, I love prizes in cereal boxes, prizes from even, like, friggin' gumball machines. Prizes, if there's a chance where it's like, you could win this, or you could have, or you could have this, or you could get this, I was all over it. And Nick talking about the giving out the codes got me thinking, well, why don't we do kind of arcade, re more arcade related prizes? And some of you who are follow us on the Twitter or the or Instagram, I bought a sealed box of Donkey Kong cards from the 80s. And what's really cool about these, there's three game cards. It's a picture that looks like the stage from Donkey Kong with a bunch of little circles that you scratch off. And you gotta scratch off a path to the top to save Pauline. And if you find if you hit two barrels, you lose. And then there's extra things you can find for extra points and that if you make it to the top, you can add up your points and write down your score on the card. Then the other so it's three of those and then there's a bunch of stickers. All hysterical, hysterical eighties centric. Please tell me that that's Donkey Kong that stickers. Googly eyes. What do you mean? Googly... I had one. No, that's probably something else. I had Donkey Kong stickers as a kid that had like little Google. Oh no, no, no. The, these, these are the no. These are flat, all flat stickers. Okay, then I think I have some of those too on my one of my old uh, sticker albums downstairs in the basement. But anyway, so after Nick with the codes and thinking, it's like, why don't we just start giving? giving shit away even real physical stuff on our show so i'm going to constantly be searching for something old retro and arcade related to give out on the show right now it's donkey kong cards so if you want and we'll probably depending on how many people will spawn it'll be anywhere from a pack to i'd say even three packs that we'll mail out if anyone's interested that we're giving that <clears throat> we'll be giving away and there's other gaming cards out there i'm trying to track down just to give an idea i'm trying to track down some video city cards those are oh, the ones th those. those are the ones that include like frogger and everything mm -hmm. i'm also trying to track down some of the pac-man and super pac-man cards then of course the nintendo game packs gotta have those and then there's other other surprises and surprise prizes and surprises that we have. Gotta get those store. Michael Jackson superstar of the eighties cards. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so the, now we get to the important part, how to win this stuff. Nick, I'll let you take over. We're, we're so, kind of brainstorming. It's still we're trying to figure yeah. out like a secret so, code, like almost like a orphan Annie, the coding ring or 
Son of a bitch. <laughs> so once again, we are going to issue a phrase. So the phrase, since we're talking about the king, it's on like Kong. All you have to do if you're listening to the podcast, if you go on to ar thearcadehunters.com, you can leave it in the comments. It's on like Kong mm -hmm. or on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter and Tumblr. If you're following us on any of those sites, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, oh, any of those sites, leave leave the comment. It's on like Kong. And then we'll do just like we did before. We'll get your name in there and we'll start giving stuff away. And it depends on how many people enter. You know, many yep. will enter. Few will win. <laughs> yeah, it depends. If, if a ton of people enter, it will be, because we're going to have more than one winner, yeah. it will be at least one pack. But if if like probably like the numbers I've entered before, and let's say we pull three or four winners, probably three or four packs each easily. There you go. We'll mail we'll mail them out within a week of mm -hmm. hearing about it, and also let us know if you if you like this. We'll keep on doing it. There's lots of stuff I've been hunting out. I've been getting into my nostalgia groove lately, and first thing I start off was I'm like box of Donkey Kong cards sealed, like new old stock done yeah because i want to have every, i want to have every one so i've been i did a i'm going to do a review i took a whole bunch of pictures there's going to be a new i'll plug this too two things there's going to be a new section on the site or a new series of posts it's going to be like a collector's corner it's mm -hmm. going to be all related to arcade toys candy etc from the past all arcade related and i have um a special review for something Neo Geo related, and then I'm also going to be talking about the next one will be the Donkey Kong cards. I'll do a review and write about them and have pictures and all that stuff. And I'm looking forward to doing that. The next plug is for Video Game Trader. I'm going to be starting a new article. There isn't a title, a new column, there isn't a title yet, but basically, I'm going to be reviewing video game related food. Cool. Both from current to past. And I went to the... We could only review the Nintendo serial system. Uh, I, oh, uh, I miss my Nintendo I, 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 I could, because I remember what it tastes like. I've been trying to hunt down a box, though. I, I got screwed every time, because... <laughs> as like I've been talking with my... My, my, my father's girlfriend is a was a nurse, or mm -hmm. she's still a nurse. And she's like, she, she gets on me about all the... You, you just eat crap all the time, Nick. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, why do you eat crap in the morning? And I told her, it's because when I was a kid growing up, just like the, the thing, we had ADHD, hyperactivity, and I couldn't eat a lot of sugary cereal. Mm -hmm. So the sugary cereal we would buy, but we'd only get by like one or two boxes of it. Mm -hmm. And it was only something that you could have on Saturday and Sunday or during a three-day weekend or whenever we were off from school. Mm -hmm. So... Like, whenever I would get get the chance, I remember seeing Nintendo, it's a cereal. Wow! Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had the two sides. They had the Zelda side with the tropical, and then they had the Mario there, side yep. with, the, with the berries. Mm -hmm. And naturally, you know, you tried each of them. And for me, the, 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 the uncrowned king was Mario. That was the best one. I kind of like the Zelda. Really? <laughs> yep. So the problem was my brother liked Mario as well. So I would get there and I would like get ready, you know, run downstairs after watching cartoons. Oh boy, I'm gonna have my Nintendo serial system. I just watched um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Muppet Babies, and uh, I'm trying to think of another cartoon. Uh, we'll just say Mask, mm -hmm. Mama Mask. And you get there, rip open the box. Oh, he ate the whole thing, and he left me the shitty Zelda. <laughs> so I never really got to eat it all that much. That and the the um god the the freaking um ninja turtles one mm -hmm. that were like the the nets with yep. the marshmallows yep, in it yeah yeah oh my god that was diabetes in a box that thing was so oversweetened it was insane it was disgusting <laughs> <laughs> my favorite cereal was always pac-man cereal yep that was hands down pac-man cereal and then the pac-man spaghetti in that oh, spaghettios they sold that for a long time with the meatballs Yep, um, the, the one path marked by me sold that all the time, but I didn't like meatballs at the time, this, so I never got it. This was the one in, uh, it was in like a chicken sauce. 
Mm-hmm. It was a weird, it was a funky one. Uh, what was it Matt over on Dinosaur Dracula had had a picture of a can recently talking about it. Yeah. If I, I saw that and that took me back immediately. It's like, holy shit, I used to love that. Makes me wonder what other people like in other countries had because it's funny, like, uh, one of the people that I follow on Instagram, I like to follow a lot of the, because, you know, as as everybody knows, if you didn't see the video of me talking about the Edge magazine, I'm wearing my Sailor Moon shirt. I'm a fan of all the, the different people that make costumes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And one of the, um, they had uh, Katsukan over in uh, Baltimore, or mm-hmm. it's like in the Maryland area. And um, one of the cosplayer I follow, her and her uh, boyfriend are from, they're from up in Canada. And she had a photo of a box of cookie crisp and a box of tricks and a bunch of like, you know, like, you know, like the cherry Coke and stuff like yeah. that. And I was just like, I know they don't sell cherry Coke in certain parts of Canada, but tricks and cookie crisp. And she goes, no, they don't sell it anymore. So whenever we go down, we just buy it. Like we, <laughs> we save like a hundred dollars to just buy junk food. <laughs> like that. I was just like, I guess I would just do that. Like you would go that up to Canada just to buy the poutine. Yeah. Like, all the... Oh Poon- man. Poutine and Cuban cigars. There you go, baby. <laughs> well, now we're probably going to have the, the restrictions. are probably going to be a little lifted now with the, the new thing. But yeah. we're not political here at Arcade Hunt. No. So, folks, we want to thank you all very much for tuning in to this new episode of the Arcade Hunters podcast. My dad's just walking in. Mm-hmm. So, as always, you can find us on all of your favorite social media platforms all over the internet. Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter. And, of course, over on YouTube, we're all available for you to see. If you want to win a pack of Donkey Kong playing cards, any of those sites that you follow us on, leave a comment of, it's on like like Donkey Kong. Yeah. And you can win. And then we'll, and then we'll, you leave that, we'll pick the winners, then we'll contact the winners for the shipping information. Very nice. So, folks, there you have it. Episode 32 of the Arcade Hunters podcast is in the books. I'm Nick. For my friend Gerard, thank you very much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. See ya.